Well, each week a group of insiders joins me to offer perspective on some of the week's top stories. This week sounding off on a record year for economic development in Indiana. The governor also outlining his 2018 agenda and could more toll roads be in Indiana's future. Our insiders this week are Bose Public Affairs Group Principal Roger Harvey. Also, Katz Corn Cunningham co-founding partner Norris Cunningham and Beck Communications President Laura Beck. And welcome one and all to Thank the you. Insiders for nice another week. Uh, off the top and our top story uh, this week uh, on the show, the economic development uh, numbers. The state had a big announcement this week. Uh, Norris announcing with a month or so to go, uh, 2017 will be a record year, they say, for deals, uh, jobs, and uh, an average wage. Any takeaways from the announcement? Been a lot of high-profile announcements, Infosys and some other big companies. Any, any takeaways? Um, well, a, a couple. First of all, I, I think just the, the sheer number of new jobs, right, around 29,000 new jobs, and you add to that the, the fact that the, the average wage is, is substantially higher uh, than, um, than the typical hourly wage or average hourly wage that we see here in Indiana. Um, both bode very, very well. I also find it interesting um, worth the, the, the split of some of those jobs, right? About 10,000 of them are manufacturing jobs, about another 7,000 in technology. Um, which is exactly where we want to be, mm -hmm. uh, I think. Uh, so this this bodes very well. It's and a good the, year. Yeah, on the mix, uh, as Norris points uh, points out, manufacturing still drives the Indiana economy, but increasingly it's it's tech jobs and it's also international jobs, about a billion dollars worth of potential uh, investment. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think you're seeing um, quite a bit of trade missions that have been occurring, at least over the last year. The, the caution always is with mm -hmm. economic development jobs and announcements like this are they are still commitments. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the next year, we'll have to go back and see, did all of this come to fruition? Mm -hmm. I certainly hope that all these companies can live up to this because if they can and if they can get it done, it's, it's mm -hmm. very good news for our state, especially yeah. in these sectors. Yeah, and a lot of it obviously depended on the economy locally, but na nationally, and, and, and what's happening there. There, Roger, as you look at, at the numbers, uh, the big numbers, again, as Laura points out, they are projections, they are commitments, and we'll see how it pans out over three to five years. But what as you look at Indiana's economic development performance and the, the attention they're getting outside of the state uh, from, from various publications and others, seems to be a lot of fairly positive news in Indiana. Oh, absolutely, I mean, we've seen this momentum building mm -hmm. uh, over the last you know, couple of years. Certainly at the State House, you've seen policies that have been uh, friendly for, for mm -hmm. growth of business. And you know, while they are commitments, I think it's important, you know, if you look at some other states where they, when it comes to incentives, they give a lot up front in some of these other states. And in Indiana, that's not, that's not the case. So, so the performance is gonna have to, is gonna have to be there for them to, um, to be successful in getting those incentives. The other thing, just real quickly, I know the big numbers, you know, everybody likes mm -hmm. big numbers, right. and, and they are impressive. But to me, I think what's, what's really nice about this is the diversity of the portfolio, if you will. When you look at small to mid-sized companies, I mean, the companies that have 50 people, 100 people, 150 people, mm -hmm. you're seeing more and more of those. And I think that's, that is a true testament to, to us, not just swinging for the fences on the big ones that get the headlines, but mm -hmm. also working to grow those organic. A lot of them are spinoffs from other companies uh, right. that have been successful here in the Midwest. And those are the kinds of companies where they're gonna grow the economy around the country. Uh, workforce is a big issue. The governor came out with his 2018 next level agenda, as he calls it, uh, with a focus on workforce. I was interested to see uh, a Toyota Mazda joint venture uh, plant not going to Indiana It'll be probably somewhere in the south, but a Toyota, I think a Toyota exec was quoted as saying one of the reasons why Indiana perhaps out of the mix, questions about ability to have enough workers to, to, to fund a plant or to fill a plant like that. Is workforce, could be the Achilles heel here in Indiana? I don't know if I'd say it's the Achilles heel, but I think we have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. And I think when you look at the legislative agenda, um, that's a key part of it. Um, but at the same time, we have to be continuing to work together with our institutions and starting right from grade school, too. Mm -hmm. Let's look at how we train people starting from the very early ages in these careers that we know are coming down the path mm -hmm. and then really help people decide maybe college isn't right for you. Maybe yep. getting some type of technical certification is a better way to go. Yep, Norris, uh, workforce, internet, yeah. uh, connectivity, uh, more nonstop flights. What's your takeaway from the, the agenda for next year? So I, I, uh, I focused a lot on the infrastructure Structure piece in particular, I liked that it, that it included um, expanding access um, and affordability of broadband. Mm -hmm. uh, right? I mean, because when we talk about workforce development, it does start very, very early. It starts in childhood. It starts in school. It starts with uh, internet connectivity and and allowing the kids to be able to do their homework online. Right. right? Exactly. And yeah. and so uh, for the governor to 
include broadband as part of the infrastructure agenda, um, uh, quite frankly, only makes good sense because, um, as, as I've said many times, it's a utility. The, the internet is utility just like water or electricity, and, and we've got to have it. Yep. What well, else? I think the Go one ahead. thing we are missing out, though, not to interrupt you, but mm -hmm. the one thing that we are missing out on when you do look at that workforce and that economic development agenda is we're losing out on some of these clean energy jobs mm -hmm. um, by not focusing on them in the coming session. And I don't know if it's because there's not the political will to do it, or maybe that's just mm -hmm. low down on the priority list, but we are now starting to surpass in terms of solar power. Um, we are now surpassing um, jobs in solar as opposed to coal. Mm -hmm. And then we have such great potential, um, especially in renewable energy manufacturing components. Mm -hmm. um, and we're lagging behind others in the in the Midwest. So we've we really have got to capitalize on that because I'm, I'm afraid we're going to fall behind. Very good. Uh, advanced manufacturing, distribution and logistics, Conexus Indiana is really the group that, that spearheads that. Norris, I know you wanted to talk. You were interested in uh, uh, the new CEO uh, of the organization, Mark Howell, a well-known name in the business community, uh, COO at Angie's List. He'll be taking over Steve Dwyer, another a big name. Uh, important job. Yeah, very important job. It's good to see them tap some someone from Angie's List with uh, with the mm -hmm. uh, with the talent to be able to to grow and expand what Conexus uh, Indiana has been able to do. Um, you know, about one in five Hoosiers um, either uh, make things or move things. Right, and and so what Conexus brings in terms of um, uh, the focus that they have on young people, for example, and uh, again, workforce development mm -hmm. uh, being really, really uh, critical. And I think that this is a way of being able to arrest that brain drain that we talk about all the time. Right? Yeah, uh, you talk about the evolving economy, the tech economy getting a lot of attention. Uh, Laura, we saw this week and this weekend uh, grow with Google. This mm -hmm. uh, this national uh, initiative put on by uh, Google, investing a billion dollars over five years, deciding to launch it right. here in Indianapolis, which I think a few years ago, I don't know that that would ever have happened. Is this a, an indicator, another indicator that Indiana's really on the tech map? Oh, I think so, absolutely. I, I was joking ahead of time, I'm gonna go take some classes, go some coding <laughs> classes good, while yeah. we're in town. Sure. Right. But I mean, really, it's it, this is, I think, a, a key sign for us, and, and it's just as, as Nora said, you know, we, we make things, mm -hmm. we move things, and the information economy is really a key part for us here. Mm -hmm. So I think that with all of the people says that we have. Um, I think it's strong, and I know that's something you focus on quite mm -hmm. a bit. Sure. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, the bottom line is we've been a test market for restaurants for years, for years. actually, right? right? right. So yeah. Why not yeah. for tech? Right, right. right. exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah, we saw Steve Case and the rise of the rest, that nationwide exactly. tour. Yep. Indianapolis saw that as well. So it seems to be our perception around technology sure. is changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's exactly right. Perception around football, maybe not so much. It's a, it's a tougher uh, 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 time now for the Colts, the Indianapolis Colts, struggling this season. Obviously, Andrew Luck, a lot of people expected this to happen, announced uh, about a week ago he's out for the season. A lot of speculation and accusations out there about how the Colts handled that, that whole deal. Any thoughts? Well, look, there's always going to be people. I mean, yeah. certainly the people that are season ticket holders have a have a much different opinion probably than, right. the, than the person that just watches casually. Right. Um, yeah, I guess the bright spot of it is is that we continue the way we are. We, we probably ought to be able to get a couple of people good, for the yeah. offensive mm -hmm. line yeah. with yeah. Yeah. draft right. picks. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but no, I mean, no doubt about it. It's uh, I mean, we, we need luck to be to be healthy. Yeah. I mean, he's mm -hmm. he hopefully he's going to be here for a long time. And, um, you know, there's no there's no sense throwing him out there now at yeah. this, this point. The well, season, well, I, I think, quite frankly, it, it strikes me that that um, bringing him back in a shortened season, um, where you when you still haven't fixed the problems that they have on the That's offensive sure, line right. to begin with, mm -hmm. uh, is a recipe for something worse happening mm -hmm. uh, down the road. Shutting him down now, um, and, and and hopefully being able to to uh, uh, to improve that roster yeah. by the time he comes back next year makes a lot more yeah. sense. As, as the football mom, I uh, yeah. hope yeah. my I hope my ten year old can fit into that uh, jersey still when. Uh, when when he comes good back. Good deal. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he's a big fan. Quarterback in training. Very uh -huh. good. Laura Beck, Roger Harvey, Norris Cunningham. Thanks very much, one and all. Yeah. We'll be right back after this.